uh, congratulations, Jeffrey, on scoring a 730. Um, very, very happy to uh, hear the good news. Are you, are you, what are your feelings right now? Um, I think it's finally, you know, how you feel after a good redance. I mean, for me, GMAT has been a really, really long journey. And yeah, and finally to get a 700 plus score was something like, oh, oh my God. I mean, yeah, I'm done with it. And yeah, <laughs> that was pretty good. That's nice to see. Um, so, so is it like a weight is lifted off your shoulders or like how, how is it uh, in essence when you started preparing to versus how you are now? Like what is, what is the kind of emotion going through your head? Uh, yeah, definitely a weight lifted off my shoulders. Uh, but then, uh, then I realized the next steps for B school, and then I realized, okay, that's a whole different lot. Uh, GMAT was literally just the first step towards uh, the thing. Uh, but yeah, like when I started, um, I was literally like, uh, so I was in my second year when I actually thought of giving the GMAT because uh, ISB had this YLP program for pre-final year and final year kids, and I was like, you know, I'll just uh, go for it and I'll you know try and. That was my first, uh, you know, first knowledge about GMAT and I started like looking towards GMAT as a good way to end up in a good B school. Uh, so yeah, I mean, at that point I thought, yeah, I mean, I had always been someone who's really smart at studies and like, not like really smart, but yeah, I never had any issues with like uh, getting a good score. So I, for initially, honestly, I was a little confident that, you know what, uh, it's okay, I'll just crack it. It's not a big deal. I'll study for two, three months and that's okay. Uh, but then I, when I actually got in the GMAT, um, I realized what a big, <laughs> what a big deal it is and how consuming it is and how much hard work it actually needs. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I have a huge change of perception from when I actually first looked towards GMAT to now. So yeah. Well, uh, that's good to know. I think uh, more consuming mentally, obviously more than physically, but uh, a lot of people when they start off their GMAT journey, think of it as an easier exam to catch. Um, and frankly, I've given both and I, I know that GMAT is not easier than CAT. Both of them have their own nuances, uh, but the GMAT requires a lot of more consistency and uh, a resilient spirit per se, right? Uh, so take us through your GMAT journey, like take us through how you started, what did you do and how did you get to eGMAT? Okay, right. So when I initially started, a friend recommended me this private tutor and I just went up to him and like, um, yeah, I mean, he told me that, okay, you know what, you you seem smart, you can score a 700 plus and let's just start with the classes. So I, 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 I went through the whole class thing with him and then uh, I started giving mocks. But the thing was, my score was uh, always hovering around six uh, 650. And when I used to tell him that, he used to be like, just, you know, just keep on practicing, just keep on practicing, you'll get there, you get there, you get there. And... Uh, yeah, I mean, I just kept on doing that. I have given so many walks with him. Um, and I just realized, I mean, uh, so there's this point you realize that, okay, it's not working. There's something that you are doing wrong. So, um, so I took my first attempt at GMAT and I, I was expecting at least above six. I mean, actually, honestly, I was expecting about 700, although my mock schools were around 680, 670, 690. I was hoping for a miracle, but that didn't happen. And I scored a 630. And that was such a low, that was such a low point for me in my life because, I mean, I've never, never been like bad at something. And like for the first time, uh, Scoring a 630 was something really disappointing. And then after that, I mean, I talked to the tutor and he was like, you know what, just get back to it. Just keep on practicing, practicing, practicing. And I did that, but uh, I didn't see anything like happening or anything, you know, uh, any like any change as per se. And I kept, I kept, I gave so many mocks. I mean, I took 10 export global mocks. I, I gave Manhattan mocks. I, I gave Veritas mocks. I gave all the mocks out there. And my score was like literally not going beyond 700. And then I realized, you know what, uh, maybe this is not the way to do it. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. So I took up the free trial that EGMAT had on its website. And I started to go through the videos and uh, I actually like, I mean, SC, I started with SC and I actually found it really nice. The, the way if you first test your uh, current knowledge level and then you learn the concept and then you test the after knowledge level after you learn the concept, concept that actually helped. And 
yeah so i mean i liked it and then i had a counseling session with rajat uh, before joining the course and yeah I, i talked to him and it was and i was convinced that okay easy math might be the way for me to get a good gmat score and yeah so i enrolled in it and all that and i started studying uh and slowly and steadily i could actually realize that uh i had some weak points when i was you know going through the videos and in some concepts i was doing really bad and then slowly i i learned uh i started learning the concepts of in sc and in math and yeah i slowly got there and then up uh, i mean uh, so the first step when i opened the eg mat uh, portal i was a little clueless as to like where to start but then i mailed the eg mat support team and a uh, one of the consultant like uh, quickly replied to me and he sent me a whole way like stage 1 stage 2 stage 3 process is like complete the conceptual videos then do the cementing quizzes and then you know if you reach the uh, target accuracy then only you can move ahead and i did that and it was a long journey because uh, i mean every sc rc cr all that all of that and yeah i mean after i was completed with the whole process of uh, quant and verbal uh, i gave my first mock uh, and uh, i got a 700 on the sigma x and then yeah so then i i mailed them then and that's when you came in and you analyzed the whole mock thoroughly and you told me that i was actually lacking a lot in my algebra and geometry part and uh, then i went back i i revised algebra and geometry i did i i i gave so many quizzes i think giving quizzes and achieving a particular accuracy and being strict that unless you don't achieve that accuracy you should not move ahead was something really important uh, that made made my uh, skills better because uh i mean sometimes you get too lenient with yourself you know but i remember that uh, my accuracy was supposed to be 70% or something and i got 65 and the consultant was like no you have to reach the 70 accuracy and only then you can move ahead so yeah i guess uh, that really helped me a lot and scholarium had a lot of questions uh which were really diverse and covered in fact almost each kind of topic uh, that could be asked on the gmat so yeah that was that was really helpful i guess my uh, i realized my weak areas and that's how i worked towards it so yeah let's uh, let's compare and contrast your your tutor which who asked you just keep practicing and give like a bunch of mocks versus what you did with eg math where do you think and what do you think actually made the difference in your opinion i guess uh, the the major difference between my tutor and eg math was that uh, the it it taught i mean through the analysis of mocks and through my work scholarium reports uh, i was able to identify my weakness but when i was giving it with a tutor or when i was just randomly giving my mocks and i'm solving it i have no way to actually figure out which which subject or which sub topic or uh, or the area which i'm lacking in and through e gmat that was a really i mean it's really important when you're giving a gmat exam that you identify your area of weakness and not spend time on something that you're already that you're already good with so uh i think that was really important um, that e gmat uh, helped me through so yeah i mean i know that i was bad at algebra so i kept on practicing algebra and i got better at it and yeah miraculously my quant score improved i knew i was better at bad at sc because of my uh, reports and then i kept on working at sc and that's how i improved at sc so yeah i the the weakness analysis is something really important on gmat you need to be really strategic when you're approaching gmat and uh, through the egmat portal and the consultant's guide i guess i i reached i i reached the target got it so you've seen a you've seen a 100 point improvement from the last time you took the gmat and that's phenomenal right um so what what in terms of sc or algebra and geometry have you changed uh from the last time you actually studied it like how is uh the eg mat course any different from any of the books out there um so the sc course of eg mat is no doubt like the best out there it covers each and every uh um, topic it covers all the contingencies everything that could be asked on gmat um the thing that i think a lot of students might not know how to utilize that resource properly and 
I guess the, uh, the way I utilized the resource was I made sure that while I was listening to the videos, I noted down the important points because it's not really easy to just go back to the videos and find out the most important points. And I, I made a really huge document out of it and I kept on revising the document every day. Also, the one approach that I changed towards SC was that uh, every time I used to find the correct answer, but uh, after the course, I started realizing that GMAT was eliminating the wrong answers and that's how you end up with the correct answer. Um, so yeah, that was really important. Also, along with that, initially while I was giving the scholar in your mocks uh, for SC, I just, if I got a correct answer, I used to just I used to just uh, just not go through it and if I got a wrong answer I used to just see why the answer which is wrong uh, which I marked was wrong and why the one which I marked was right didn't mark was right um, but uh, the biggest change which I felt uh, in my SE skills came came in wherein I actually went to e more than more than anything else I think you mentioned about how important it is to not just focus on on questions that you're getting wrong but on how to focus on questions you're getting right as well because a lot of the times we get a question right and we don't know why we've gotten it right right so it's very important to really pay attention how, how did you manage to keep a track of all of these questions um again scholaranium uh, is uh, so scholaranium has uh, uh, has a whole like you have the attempt uh, attempt log you you have the uh, you can select the kind of questions you want. So like uh, you can select the questions that you went wrong previously. So you're talking about the question uh, that you can, you, you can create, yeah. right? Got it. Got it. Yeah. Right. And then did you create some sort of document to just go back to or revise or rely on when you had to revise your notes or, or how did you manage doing that? For SE, I did, and I'm glad I did because that document was so helpful. I mean, I, 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 I mean, that was the only. I mean, so first when I started SE, after that I had CR at RC, and there was a long journey ahead after SE. Remember everything after going through so much. Uh, so I think the document was a really good, uh, good way to like remembering uh, and like revising again and again. So the document, I used to go back to the document every time there was any issue or like if I was not going well on SC, I, I went to the document, I read, uh, it was a whole 20 page document. I used to read through it again. I used to make sure that, you know, I, I remember the rules again and again because there are SC requires you to remember or remember a few things. And yeah, I, I went, I mean, that really helped. I think it's very important that when you're going through the videos, you, you note down important things because you can't expect yourself to remember everything because the module is huge and you need a lot of, you, you, you can't go back. It's just not possible. So, right. Yeah. I think that's a good point. I think you can't keep going back again and again and just keep making new notes every time, right? There, there needs to be this one master document. I think uh, a lot of people will, will take that uh, away as a, as a massive learning from you. Uh, but moving on from just... Uh, uh, you know, SC and, and the particular subsections. How important uh, was it to just get tests ready? Like I remember beginning to work with you, I, I mentioned that it's very important to get tests ready. Uh, I also mentioned the art of letting go of questions and stuff like that. How important are these little things when you actually go into this exam? Um, it's actually really important. Because uh, the thing is, uh, when you're solving questions on the scholarium or when you're just solving them uh, individually, you don't feel like letting go of the question. You don't have the aspect of like, you know, what kind of questions I'll get in in the next, I mean, ahead in the time. So, I mean, you just try to solve it and that's your focus. But when you're, when you're going for the test, you need to think strategically. You need to know that if you spend too much time on this question, then you have a chance of messing up the questions ahead. And that would be, be a much big, greater penalty. So I guess uh, knowing the real opportunity cost of every question is really important when you're on, like when you're thinking, uh, as a tell in in terms of giving a test and yeah I mean you you need to give a few marks to actually get accustomed to it um, you need to know that uh, you can let go because I was having a really tough time letting go of questions because I was like no I can do it I just need a little one minute and the thing was I couldn't do it and I messed up my end and 
yeah so uh, slowly and steadily by by giving a few mocks by giving gmat club tests i realized that uh, i need to let go and in the main exam itself i realized that i couldn't solve this one question and i mean i i was like i could do it but then i had already exceeded the two minute mark and i was like you know what i just need to let go of it and i just marked some random question and i went ahead and i think yeah i think uh, a lot of students don't really realize when they exceed the two minute mark so they just kind of stick to the question and tend to lose a lot of time in doing so right uh, so let's let's go to the sigma x box now or uh, when you got the first like when you got 700 on the sigma x mock uh, what was it like did you feel that is this is something this is the right time to book the gma date or how did you go about booking your gma date what guided that decision um yeah i mean when i got the first 700 i was like uh, plus i had my icylp deadline coming up uh, so there were two important factors in deciding my gma date um so when i got my first 700 and i was like uh, although i wasn't sure that i'm like still test ready but uh, i was like okay i might uh, the gma online exam actually allows you to reschedule so i was like you know what at least i should give myself a target a date line so that i'm i'm sincere um and i booked the date uh, i booked the date and i booked the time i mean the timing and everything and yeah so i mean that actually helped because i was a little lenient before booking the gmat exam but after i did um, i actually was really serious really focused because i knew i had a deadline coming up and i'm one of those people who actually work better when there's a deadline around so yeah got it and plus i knew at the back that gmat online actually allows you to reschedule so that was right and that's one of the biggest that benefits really of the gmat online right at the end of the day so the first exam that you would have taken would have been the in center one and this one was the online one what kind of difference did you feel in both of these exams so well, there was a very huge difference for me at least uh, i am someone who gets like who has uh, who suffers from a little anxiety before the exams and i get really nervous so like going to the test center was honestly a little scary for me because they make you sit and then you come you come up then you give a passport and they scan it and everything and there's this whole a half an hour before the test you know the silent room you can't talk and you just sit there and it just uh, i don't know it, i just and the way they check you and everything it just i don't know for a, i find it a little intimate reading like you I, and but like in case of gman online it was like every other day i just sat there and i mean it was i had i had the, my environment and control which is really important i mean on the test day when you are anyway feeling helpless or a little helpless i guess so uh, having one thing in your control is something really uh, helpful i guess for me uh, because i mean i knew that uh, i had the correct lighting i had the correct temperature i i, I was sitting the way i want to um, uh, in i mean in the test center you need to and sit no on the chair i i gave the no exam exactly that's the best part yeah. i was sitting on my bed comfortably with a pillow with a pillow and the support and i had a blanket on my lap and it was it was a really uh, you know it was a really chilled way of giving the exam i mean i didn't feel like i was giving the exam uh, which was really, really helpful because then i sleep because i mean when when i sit on the bed i feel extremely sleepy yeah uh, i mean uh, actually uh, i i i i do but then that i mean i was i knew i was giving an exam so that was that was always there in the back of my head but it was it was really nice i mean i i never felt so calm before while giving an exam yeah, i so, mean that's yeah. in the lighter way but uh, now now that you gave the gmat online how did you prepare for it like was your prep for the gmat online any different um not really i i think uh, yeah i think in a way it was because i made sure that all my tests or the mocks i gave were were in the way i how i was going to give my gmat online so i guess i i made sure that i give my mocks every day on the same time where the time i booked for the gmat um that way it was similar but otherwise it, there wasn't much difference i just i guess i just made sure that the that the place i take the mocks was uh, was the same place i, I was planning to give my gmat exam or and you so, must yeah that's the it. physical white or the online one i use a physical white board and that was amazing so so like i'm already uh, so i made sure that i did all my practice from the physical white board so i already was accustomed to it on the day of exam so it didn't feel any different 
so uh, and plus physical typeboard is literally so easy to use uh, and plus the size that uh, jean hat has allowed is pretty huge so i mean i don't think you would have any problem with a physical typeboard so do you get a really big one or is it better to just get a medium one and keep rubbing off your explanations and answers uh, so what i did was so there's this whiteboard available with a table uh so like uh so i i had a whiteboard uh, and which had a table underneath it so i just kept the whiteboard with a table on my side so i used to just keep it here and uh, i had my exam laptop here and i used to just solve it and that way it was really comfortable got it uh makes makes a lot of sense yeah so uh, let's just talk a little bit about the gmat day well, what did you do before the exam just right before the exam and how did you go about the exam in itself uh okay on i mean talking about the d day i actually had a so i was supposed to take my exam at 12:15 uh but because of some bad reason i couldn't sleep the whole night and i was awake till 7 uh, 7 a.m so i knew that i couldn't take it at 12:15 because i was already exhausted and i hadn't gotten like enough sleep on the day so what i did was last minute at 10 10 a.m i scheduled my exam for 5 o'clock uh in the evening and i i got enough sleep um i i calmed myself down because i i have this habit of getting like really anxious and so yeah i mean i calmed myself down i i, I you know i was like uh, i prepared myself that it's okay whatever happens you know it's fine and yeah that's so so i did that and uh so i took an exam that at 5 am 5 pm sorry and yeah that was it uh thankfully they allowed the uh, rescheduling at the last moment because if they didn't i don't know how it would have been right. so yeah and the transition from quant to verbal i'm sure that's difficult because you just have 30 seconds to a minute between the sections and when you see a verbal question right after you solve so many quant questions the transition in, in the mind is essentially very difficult how do you manage like transitioning so well um i think the the biggest thing that helped me was practice i mean i made sure that uh, between i mean every mock that i took i did not take a moment of break i mean i just went ahead and i guess after giving five six mocks i was pretty accustomed to the to that and uh, i didn't feel any heat of it on the day So anything, practice. anything uh, else that you'd like to share with us that really helped you? Uh, if it's it's some advice from the support team, something you learned, uh, we would really love to hear that. Okay, firstly, like I would, anyone who has taken EG Mat, I think uh, they should make sure that they are in constant touch. Uh, Up, like they're in constant, you know, conversation with the support team. I mean, I know I was in constant. I was letting them know my progress. I was, you know, getting suggestions back, and you know, uh, I think they should really do that. I mean, because support team actually helps you guide you. I mean, some people are like, okay, I got the portal. Now I'll just figure it out myself. I think don't do that. Have a have someone from the support team talk to you and let you know, guide you through. And this we love really students important. who kind of do this back and forth and and give us uh, their their progress updates because that makes us more invested in them as well, right? So it's like a two way relationship there. Yeah, I mean, uh, when you are talking about online, you feel like there's no personal relation when you're. I mean, there's no personal connection when you're dealing with online classes or something like that. But in case of EGMAT, that I never felt that because I knew that as soon as I mail that I mail the support team, I would get a reply quickly, and you know they would actually send me a brief proper reply as to where I should go about. So it actually never felt like uh, an online tutor. It was it had all the personal touch that I wanted. So um, I think that that means yeah, that the world really to important. world to us and and the entire support team as well. I think a bunch of us helped you uh, prepare for the exam, and I remember uh, all of us replying to you at some point. Um, how important do you think? And I'm not saying this because uh, we kind of uh, we kind of provide that support, but how important do you think is it to have someone, someone to connect with, someone to kind of be your mentor when you're when you're preparing for the exam? 
I think it's 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 really important because there are times when you when you are down. I mean, when there are times when you don't score good on a test. There are times when you are doing really bad, and to you know actually come out of it and you know buck yourself up. You sometimes you don't have the energy in yourself to actually you know decide your next path, uh, decide what to do, and you are clueless. And when you have a mentor and you have someone else actually telling you and guiding you what to do. i think that makes the work um, i mean you have already come half the way uh, you already know what to do it's just you who has to do it so i guess uh, having a mentor actually just takes off all the pressure on you of making a decision when you're already low uh, uh, and that is something very important when you're preparing for gmat you need to you know go back you 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 will fall you need to get up you need to go back up and like just go again and you know be hopeful and having a mentor actually helps a lot in that case so what's next to you you're going to apply to isb this year then i see Uh, yeah since i i mean i i'm a fresh college graduate uh, i think isb while be would be the best step for me right now uh, i i am thinking of getting like getting a few work ex a few years of work ex and then applying to colleges in us too um but for now i guess the ylp is the next step uh, for me uh, i just took the exam because i knew it had a five year validity and with corona and all the uncertainty going on i think i think it was the best way to utilize your time and for like you have a security for 5 years so yeah that's true i think a that very was... very very good use of your time to improve 100 points on the gmat and uh, we are extremely happy that you have uh, uh, congratulations again from the entire team at uh, eg mat and we hope that you get into your target please thank you thank you.